How much influence should people who are working to promote the interests of a foreign state have within Britain's main opposition party and should they be transparent about where their money is coming from? In this video, I'm joined by my colleague, John McAvoy, who's been investigating Labour Friends of Israel. John, welcome to Declassified. Thanks very much, Phil. Can you tell us about your latest article, John, on this organisation called Labour Friends of Israel? Yeah, sure. Um, so Labour Friends of Israel is a pro-Israel um, lobby organisation which aims specifically at the Labour Party. Um, it was set up a, a long time ago, set up in 1957, um, within the context of um, the, the Anglo-French Israeli invasion of Suez. Um, and so it's one of its kind of initial goals was to insulate Israel from criticism um, over its uh, policies among the British left. So what does Labour Friends of Israel do today? Um, one of its main activities is funding uh, MPs to go on what they call fact-finding missions to Israel. Um, and what these fact-finding missions are is um, they're, they're, they're basically, they bring, they bring MPs over, they visit leading um, Israeli politicians, Israeli business people, um, and they're basically shown a sanitised version of the um, political environment in Israel. So they're not <clears throat> typically shown, you know, the, the horrors of the apartheid system. Uh, they're not shown, for example, the aftermath of Israel's um, horrendous bombing campaigns uh, in Gaza over the past particularly decade. Um, and they're basically cultivated by the pro-Israel lobby so that when they return to Britain, um, they're more likely to support Israel's um, domestic and foreign policy agenda. How many Labour MPs would you say have gone on these kind of trips to Israel that you found from your research and how senior are some of those MPs up in the now in the party are we talking about shadow cabinet members for example yes yeah, so in the past um in the past decade Labour Friends of Israel has funded over 60 of these trips and um, they've spent um since 2002 roughly 150,000 pounds on these trips at least according to the electoral commission and, and it seems that some of the trips aren't actually included on the electoral commission so the numbers are likely much higher um, and what we found is that a, a large number of Keir Starmer's shadow cabinet have accepted funds from Labour Friends of Israel since becoming MPs. And um, I believe the number eight members of his, his shadow cabinet. Um, and that includes figures uh, such as David Lammy, the shadow foreign secretary, uh, Emily Thornberry, the former shadow foreign secretary and now the shadow attorney general, um, and six other key, Rachel Reeves as well. And um, so key shadow cabinet figures um, have accepted money from this organisation. Um, and what, what, it, what the, the Labour Friends of Israel um, appears to try to do is to actually target those who it, who, who it expects to, you know, um, gain power within the Labour Party. So it has influence over kind of um, key agents of influence. And on the one hand, you could say this is what we would expect any kind of pressure group or, or lobby group to be doing. But one of the issues with Labour Friends of Israel is that whilst the MPs declare that they get money uh, or they get trips funded by Labour Friends of Israel. Am I right in saying we don't know where Labour Friends of Israel itself is getting the money from to pay for these trips? Yeah, exactly, Phil. So it, it doesn't disclose its funders um, on its website. Declassified has actually asked Labour Friends of Israel on two separate occasions um, where it gets its funding from. It hasn't responded. And um, historically, we know for sure, at least, that Labour Friends of Israel has received funding from um, a series of pro-Israel uh, business figures in, in the United Kingdom, such as Trevor Chin. Um, Trevor Chin has also funded um, a number of um, Labour Party politicians as well. We know for sure that Labour Friends of Israel has close ties in terms of personnel um, with the Israeli embassy in London. Um, as many of the viewers will have seen, there was um, a documentary that came out on Al Jazeera back in 2017 called The Lobby. And in this, um, in this documentary, basically, a journalist goes undercover and uh, gets access to some um, discussions that are going on behind the scenes between Labour politicians such as Joan Ryan, who um, was the former chair of Labour Friends of Israel, and figures in the Israeli embassies such as Shai Massat, who was listed as, I think, second secretary, but it seems more likely that he was involved in kind of an, an intelligence operation. Um, and in this discussion between Joan Ryan um, and, uh, and, and others present, she basically talks about a million pounds being put um, 
for a list of names that have been given um, by the Israeli embassy in London. And this is obviously a key cause of concern. You know, over the past five or so years, we've had uh, a series of parliamentary discussions and investigations on the extent of, say, Russian or Chinese um, interference in British politics. However, there's, there's really not been as much um, political or indeed media attention on the, the very clear problem of is Israeli interference in British politics. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's essential that, you know, more, that there's an investigation into the financial, um, yeah, the financial um, uh, supporters of Labour Friends of Israel. Yeah, the, the double standards are quite deafening, aren't they? Um, at Declassified, I should say we don't take money from any foreign states. Um, we rely in large parts on donations from uh, individual readers, which allows us to tackle these topics that many other media outlets are afraid of talking about, such as the Israel lobby. Um, so if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, um, please click the button below. You can also head to our website, declassifieduk.org, to read much more about the Israel lobby and its influence in British politics. Um, and you can make a donation or a subscription to Declassified there. John, one picture that I saw um, could have been a couple of weeks ago now, which was quite stark, was a, a delegation of MPs who are members of Labour Friends of Israel. They'd actually gone out to Israel and met with uh, the president of Israel. And I think this was during the International Criminal Court of Justice genocide case. Can you talk to us a little bit more about who was in that photo and and what your reaction was to it? Yeah, so this this is quite incredible, really. It was in early January. Um, the death toll in Gaza <clears throat> had exceeded, I think at this point, 22,000 um, people, most of whom are women and children. Um, and uh, Labour Friends of Israel organised a delegation of MPs and former MPs and, and one lord. Um, so there's Christian Wakeford, who's, I think, is vice chair of LFI, and um, Margaret Hodge, um, who was one of the most vociferous opponents to Jeremy Corbyn, I think <clears throat> many of you will recall. Um, then there was Louise Elman, a former MP, and finally Ruth um, Ruth Smith, well, Ruth Anderson, formerly Smith, who is the Labour spokesperson in, in, in the House of Lords. And what LFI tweeted out was that they were there on a solidarity mission to Israel. You know, it's quite incredible that the they, they would say openly that they're there in Israel in, in solidarity with um, a state that is currently undergoing proceedings for genocide at the International Court of Justice. Um, and not only that, the picture that you referred to, uh, as you mentioned, they were there um, sat uh, amongst uh, Israeli President Isaac Herzog, who, as you, as you say, was named in the ICJ um, case against Israel for basically holding the entire uh, population of Gaza responsible for the um, activities of Hamas. Um, so you've, you've got an Israeli politician who is being named in a genocide case for quite explicit genocidal statements um, in the company of uh, LFI um, members, two of whom are MPs within the Labour Party. Um, so this is, you know, this is quite an incredible statement, to be honest, on, on, on the part of LFI. And it's clearly part of a wider agenda um, of cultivating for support for Israel, um, as it has done throughout history, as I mentioned, um, since its founding in 1957. Um, and its counterpart, Conservative Friends of Israel, have been doing very much the same. Um, and clearly the, the objective is for Israel to kind of silent, silence dissent or kind of um, promote its, its, its parliamentary supporters in it, and clearly what is a difficult time for it diplomatically and politically. Thanks, John. So if people are interested in what we've been discussing and you want to read the full story, head over to our website, declassifiedupay.org, and you can read all of John's articles there.